Hi guys, and welcome to episode 34 of Notable Needlework. I am Kate, Notable Needle, N-O-T-E-A-B-L-E, on Ravelry, on Plurk, and on Twitter. The blog, if you are watching this on iTunes, is at notablenedlework.blogspot.com. There is a Ravelry group for the podcast, which I believe is Notable Needlework Podcast. Um, come introduce yourself, show off your finished objects, talk amongst yourselves, whatever you want to do. Um, I am recording two days late because I was in New Mexico this weekend. I had originally planned to record last night. Yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> um, by the time we got home from the airport and got dinner along the way and let out our friend's dog who Will was, I guess, dog watching sort of this weekend, it was 9.30 and I was exhausted and so I went to sleep. Um, <clears throat> it has been a very busy week uh, and a very productive one at that. Um, I don't entirely remember what happened as far as nursing school goes last week. Uh, yeah, it, it, it sort of feels like it's been two weeks since I recorded and that school was, the, the three days that I was in school was one week and then the vacation was another. <laughs> so I'm going to try and remember everything. I make no guarantees about this. So I will start with finished objects because I have a lot of them. I was very productive this weekend. So the first are my happy socks. Um, this is Studio June Cash Wool in the Sunshine and Rainbows colorway. And I flipping love how they turned out. Um, obviously I was not trying to make them matchy matchy because it's not striping yarn, it's just variegated, but they actually sort of match. Not 100% exactly, but they sort of match, and that's really cool. Because I didn't plan for that at all. Um, I had planned to wear these to class today, and then there was a high of 87. So flip-flops it was. But I love them. And they make me happy. I am a little sad that I won't be able to wear them until at least Friday though. Because I cannot wear any other socks but white with my uniform and I'm in the uniform Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So either around the house or on Friday I will get to wear these. I flipping love how they turned out. Hmm. Um, the next one, my nose is itchy because I haven't been around the cats for, you know, four or five days and now they're remembering who I am and so obviously want to be around me all the time. Next finished object is another hat for a classmate. Um, it's just a simple beanie pattern and this is out of the Michael's store brand, um, the impeccable loops and threads, worsted weight acrylic yarn. Um, she had initially told me that her favorite colors were purple and green and so I got to choose the yarn and the pattern and when I saw this it's the fresh lilac colorway. I knew that this was going to be perfect for her and I love how it turned out. Um, I like the nice thick swirls along the most of the body and then the little spiral star in, up at the top. And I think she's going to like it. Um, I've been toying around with the idea of making a little pom pom to put on top, but I think that might be overkill for her because she is in her 30s with two sons. So I don't want to make it too cutesy because she she's very petite. Um, so I think leaving it as is will be good for her. Um, she will be getting that tomorrow, and I'm sure she's excited about that. Um, <clears throat> what 
other finished objects do I have? Work in progress, work in progress. You're finished. So, I got the yarn for the Bella's Mittens on Monday evening. I finished them by the time I got off the plane on Thursday morning. They are a super quick knit. I knit these in um, Patton's Classic Wool Held Double on size 9 needles. And I love how they turned out. I really do. It's always a little difficult to get these on when I'm wearing my rings, so I'll put this with the smooth. I have not blocked them yet because I did not have any way to block them um, while I was in New Mexico. So the hand is a little bit tight right now, um, so I am going to want to block it. But otherwise, it fits really well. Um, it was not as cold as I thought that it was going to be in New Mexico, and so I didn't actually wear these while I was there. Um, it all of a sudden got super warm, and so it was more in the 60s as a high instead of the 40s <laughs> that it had been the week before. So I didn't get to wear them there, but I am glad that it's done, and I love them. I'm looking forward to it getting cold enough for me to use them here, and I know for sure that I will be using them um, in our December DAR meeting because we will be participating, our chapter will be participating in the Wreaths Across America. Um, I believe the date is December 10th when different groups across the country lay wreaths on the um, graves of soldiers. So we, our chapter has voted to participate in that for our December meeting. So I know that I will be wearing these on that day because it's December in Alabama and we will be outside. So I'm already looking forward to that. Uh, those, yes, these are the three objects that I have here. I actually finished two other scarves. Um, my mother, <laughs> went to a local yarn shop for her very first time ever on this trip. She has been to Joann's and Michael's and loves looking at the fabric, or not the fabrics, the um, yarn there. She flipped out during this trip. It was her first time being in a local yarn store. Yarn store. It was her first time seeing me spin and seeing fibers and sort of grasping the idea that fiber gets spun and then it becomes yarn. So it was a fun weekend. Um, the other finished objects, I have pictures I will be linking to the project page on Ravelry. Um, they were two simple scarves knit out of Misty Alpaca hand paint chunky. I can read that. I know it's backwards and I'll have um, the pictures and links to it, but it was in the Havasu colorway. On my Ravelry page I'm calling them Painted Desert Scarves because that's exactly what the colors reminded me of. And we, my mom bought me the yarn uh, and I was making a scarf for my cousin whose house we were staying at who lives in New Mexico and can therefore use the scarves in the winter. And she bought two, I'm hesitant to call them skeins because they were completely loose. And Hanks makes it sound like they were actually like twisted. It was just sort of loops. Um, each one is 108 yards. So we had initially bought two skeins of the yarn and because I didn't have any large needles um, she got me a set of size 13s. I don't think it says the brand name on here. It was 
I have no idea what brand these are. They're the ones that come with like the pictures of the bamboo along the sides and there's a little transparent window where you can see the needles. Um, so I got the needles, I got the yarn. I finished both of them in less than 24 hours. They were a very quick knit and my cousin was satisfied with the length that a single skein gave her. So I made the second one for my mom and she loves it. They both do. Um, my cousin Ruby was actually wearing it when we went up to Taos. I finished it on the car ride up to Taos and she was wearing it around. Um, and I'll talk more about that when I show you my stash enhancement. Woo. Um, but yeah, I do have pictures of them though, but obviously they are with their wearers, so they are not here. Um, works in progress. I have two currently. One is another lace ribbon slouch hat, which when it's done will look like this one with the cute zigzag pattern. I was actually wearing this hat when um, one of the girls in nursing school asked, um, you know, oh, where'd you get your hat? Oh, you made it. Like, would you be able to make me one? And I think Sometimes I think people ask that jokingly, and I'm like, yeah, sure, buy the yarn, and I'm more than happy to do it for you. Um, so she asked for one in black, so I started it, I think I started it on the plane or in one of the airports on the way back. So this is what it will look like, although I might make it, I might do an extra repeat and make it a little slouchier, because I think it would look way cuter on her with an extra repeat. But this is what I have so far. I know it's black lace is hard to see, but I've done at least one repeat. I think I'm almost at one and a half. And I have no idea how many pattern, how many repeats the pattern calls for. I think it's three in the pattern before you start the decreases. I might do four and see how that turns out and block this one. I did not block the first one. I'm going to block this one and see how that turns out. Um, but this is just the Vanna's Choice Acrylic in black. I know, creative colorway. My second work in progress, which, while it has obviously seen love because you didn't see it last week, I feel like it hasn't gotten enough love because I haven't been able to just sit down with a pattern in bags um, is oh and I can't even show you it is the Terpsichire pattern yeah it's in here somewhere I got I won this pattern from um, domesticated darling thank you Katie and I have been having fun with it I decided to use my wedding yarn which is Highland Handmaid's Sugar Maple Sock in the, oh, I mean, I know y'all can't read it anyway, but it's the Mrs. Warriner colorway, which uh, was inspired by some of my wedding photos. Yay. And it is nine kinds of tangled. There's something in here that's like falling around a lot. Anyways. I have finished sections one and two so far. Um, hopefully this will get more love soon. But it has the blues of my wedding dress with the white and green from my flowers. And I really like how it's turning out. Um, I'm just doing the Chalette version and I think that that will be more than enough because I do only have one skein of the um, Highland Handmaid's sock and I couldn't think of a color that I would want to combine with this. So the one skein it is. 
Um, and I am doing this with Diane of Knittables and um, the Wolf Farms Terpsichore, Terpsichore? The Terp Knit Along, which is going through the end of October, I believe. I got started a little late because I was waiting for the pattern to get here, but I think that I might be able to have this done by the end of October because with the Shawlette section, or with the Shawlette version, it's just the five sections plus the edging and I'm already done with two. And I hadn't, I haven't given this all that much love. So we'll see. Doo -doo -doo. So that is it for knitting, but I do have spinning. Um, first up is I think I showed this when I was spinning it, but this is just the bare wool of the Andes roving from Knit Picks um, spun on my hand, on my drop spindle, which is also from Highland Handmaids. Um, it's currently undyed because I don't know what I want to do with it. Um, I got what I would call like a fingering weight for the majority of it. Some spots are a little thicker and some a little thinner, but for the most part I would say it's either a sport or a fingering. And I don't remember how many yards I got out of it. I want to say about 200. So I have not thought about what I want to do with this. I haven't thought about what color I want to dye it or anything. It's just off the spindle. And hopefully I will pick something to do with that soon. The other finished, not really, uh, spinning is this was two ounces of fiber that was also part of the prize from the Domesticated Darling. It is two ounces of Colonial Wool and I don't know what the colorway name, if there's a colorway name is, um, but it's a very pretty burgundy color. And obviously it's still on my spindle. I have no idea how many yards I got out of it. Um, but I would call it either a DK or a worsted. And what I'm planning on doing with this is spinning up two ounces of the bare, the Knit Picks bare and plying it with this and getting like a candy cane sort of thing. Um, I'm either gonna do two or four ounces. Um, Either way, it's going to be a single, so it'll either be another worsted or um, I guess like a bulky, and it'll definitely be a bulky or a super, super bulky yarn by the time it's plied. Um, but I figured it would look kind of like a candy cane and I could do something cute with it. So yeah, that is finished spinning. And now what I have been talking about, hinting to this whole time, is stash enhancement because I got a buttload. Uh, needless to say, my mom was very excited in the fiber shop. She loves pretty things. Um, so it was a lot of fun to be in there with her. The first thing that I want to show is the second ha huh. I've been trying to find this for a while. Um I'll just talk about this real quick. My sister in law collects heart shaped rocks and I saw this one in one of the stores in I think it was Santa Fe. So I got this for her. And I had been digging through my suitcase trying to find it because I thought I lost it. That's why this bag is so heavy. So, this 
beautiful, beautiful fiber. It is six ounces of merino. Um, it does not have a colorway name. No, it just says that it's six ounces and the price. Um, it was $30, which is quite reasonable. Um, the dyeing is gorgeous. I don't know how well you can see, but it's a gorgeous turquoise color with some light spots, some dark spots. Um, yep, I'm going to wear it. And I had her write down the dyer's name. If I can read this, it's Strandavarius is the company, um, I believe the artist's name is Judy Klotner, but it's Judy with a G, so I'm not sure. I will look it up, but I know for sure that the company is Strandavarius, and this was from Lori's yarn and fiber arts studio um in taos new mexico which is a gorgeous little town um evidently i had just missed the fiber festival that they have there it was the weekend before oh well um but they have a lot of um handmade stores cute clothing stores we had a blast when we were up there. Um, it, we actually went to three fiber shops that day. Um, there was the Lori's Yarn and Fiber Art Studio, which the sign on the outside just says yarn shop. If you look for it on Google Maps, it just says yarn shop. Um, and they have a really good supply of roving and um, independent dyers plus um, some of the smaller but still mainstream dyers. Um, they had a lot of Schaefer yarns there and I was having fun telling mom about the um, women of character or whatever the series is called where they will name a colorway after a famous woman in history and put her biography on the little card. I totally almost bought the Clara Barton because I love Clara Barton, but I felt like that was sort of a waste to be getting it there when I can just as easily get it online, whereas most of the independent dyers you can't really get online. Um, unfortunately, the Stranivarius I don't believe has a website. So go to Taos, I guess, is my response. Um, what I'm planning on doing is spinning this up, hopefully into a f probably a fingering weight would be my guess. Out of six ounces, I could probably get a buttload of yardage. And then knitting that into a shawl for my mama because she loves blues and she loved this when she saw it. And it's fantastically soft merino. So I hope she loves it as much as I am going to love spinning it up. Um, hold on, it's going to get crinkly. Okay. And I'm bending. I wasn't supposed to be bending, but I'm bending. The next two things were from a store that was literally within walking distance of my cousin's house. Um, it is Warm Hearts Yarn in White Rock, New Mexico, which is just outside of Los Alamos. Um, and it is a fantastic little shop. If you somehow magically wound up in that area, go to the store. Um, I got to meet the owner and Katie is awesome. I think everyone named Katie kind of tends to be awesome. Um, but they have not only yarn and fiber from independent dyers as well as they have Cascade too. But um, they have 
jewelry and some shirts that are hand done and um, gift items. And it was flipping awesome. Uh, I'll save, it's not the best, but I like telling the story about it for last. So this is Wooly Wonka Fibers, um, and it can be found at WoollyWonkaFiber.com. I will post a link to it in the show notes. This is the Ceridwen sock. I'll post it in the show notes. Y'all know I can't pronounce anything. Um, it is 100% superwash merino, 400 yards in the Ganymede colorway. I love this purple. Um, this is showing up pretty true to color. And I am a sucker for a really good purple because it seems like not a lot of yarn companies can really do it very well. Um, I think I heard something about that the, uh, that the dye tends to break, but I love this because, yes, I know you can get purples from Cascade, whatever, but I love having that sort of tonal thing going on. Um, do I know what this is going to be yet? No. Do I think it's pretty? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, probably socks or a shawl or combined with a different color for a shawl. It'll be something. And this one... Oh, I did get one other thing from the shop which I forgot to mail today. Um, I got these two little, everything's falling out of my lap, button bead thingies. Um, they are hand either painted or made in the Czech Republic. And um, one of the women who works in the shop was actually using these and other hand made um, buttons to make her jewelry and she let me buy two of these. Um, I will be sending them to my mother-in-law who makes jewelry and I'm sure that she will come up, with, come up with something fantastic for them. But I thought that she would appreciate them. And if she doesn't she can send them to me and I'll add them on to something. Uh, okay, the last thing that I got from the shop and I seriously want to meet the woman who dyed this because she is a girl after my own heart. This is Serenity Stitches. Um, www.artfire.com slash users slash scovel s-c-o-v-e-l um, which I believe according to the sign is the artist's last name. I think it was Christina Scovel. This is the Chocolate Covered Cherries colorway, and it, it, it is 4 ounces of 50% alpaca, 30% merino, 20% tussa silk. Do I even need to say how soft this is? Um, I think the colors are fantastic. It's showing up a bit more green than it really is. That's It's supposed to be more of a brown. Um, a greenish brown, but more brown than it's coming out um but it's super soft and it has so much sheen because of the silk love it um the reason that i really want to meet this artist is because she lives in los alamos which if you do not know was the home of the first atomic bomb my Cousins, I guess she's really more like my aunt, but whatever. She's Cousin Ruby to us. Her husband and she both worked at the lab. Um, she was more in the office. Um, she doesn't really talk about what he did. Um, I don't know if she's allowed to. But anyways, they worked at the lab. 
and um, the laboratory is still in function and they do a lot of research. If Will was in nuclear engineering, we would probably already be living there um, because the work that they do up there is amazing. Um, But what I really love about this artist is this one does not have a cute um, name. It's just roving. But all of her bases have, and I don't think it shows it on the website, which is sad. I was playing around looking at other things. I don't think it says on the label it will, but her different bases have physics related names. Um, she has some alpaca yarn that was black hole, there's um, a neutrino base, there's proton, um, I forget what else there was. Needless to say, I wanted to buy it all, <laughs> but I limited myself, and so I got this chocolate covered cherries, which I'm also very much looking forward to spinning. As far as what is next, um, I will be finishing the turp, I will be finishing that hat, I will be spinning up the gorgeous turquoise braid because I have to spin it and get the yarn ready to be worked with and then actually knit something out of it before Christmas. So <laughs> I have to get on that pretty soon. Um, I will be working more on the tree skirt in the near future. I believe after I finish, I think I have a test, no I know I have a test next Monday and I think after that I will probably get a chance to work on the tree skirt a bit more. And then I'll see. I have a hat to do for my brother-in-law and I have a set of mittens to do for another girl in my class. And then I do actually have more stash enhancement coming that I will share with you next week because I got one of these in my mailbox today. I was seriously looking forward to getting my Plurk Podcaster Challenge goodie bag and my order from Nitpicks, but I got this instead. Which shouldn't have happened actually, because neither of them require my signature. And when the post office does it in our complex, they're supposed to put it in the little lockers and leave the key in our mailbox, and they didn't, and they did this. And I don't actually think that I'm going to have time during their office hours tomorrow to pick it up, which I'm really sad about. Um, oh, I thought, I think I forgot to mention this last week, but I won Super Knitter Podcaster. Woo! Thank you so much to everyone who voted. Um, and I know that the Volmiza for that will be in this box, which is another reason why I want to pick it up. Um... The other things that are in the order from Knit Picks are sock yarn for two pairs of socks. I will be knitting socks for um, my friend from nursing school's grandmothers um, that she will be giving to them as Christmas presents. So I will have plenty of time to do that. Um, and I got some pretty fiber for me. Not that I need any more. And, I'm seriously stopping now. <laughs> I can stop anytime I want, I swear. <sighs> but come on, really? When someone else is going to be paying you, or it, when someone else is paying for the yarn or the fiber, of course I'm going to say yes. Um, as far as knitting goes, I think that that is finally it. 34 minutes in and I am finally done with the knitting and the spinning and the stash enhancement. And I can't even show you everything. 
uh, nursing school. Not gonna lie, I don't 100% remember what happened last week. <laughs> I know that I had a test and that I wound up getting a 95 on it. Yeah, Patho. Um, and that I learned how to put in catheters and nasogastric tubes. And I will be validated on that next week. And that as long as I remember how to, to maintain a sterile field, I will be fine. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of it is just going to be practicing in the lab with someone else watching me going, eh, if I mess up the sterile field <laughs> until I can get it right. Um, this week is a clinical week, so I will be in the hospital with actual patients again. Hopefully <laughs> this week's patient will not compliment my breasts which people are still laughing at about whatever um love my patient um I hope everything went well for him after I was gone but yeah I think the main reason that I hope that his surgery or whatever no, it wasn't a surgery. His procedure went well is so that no one else in my clinical group has to <laughs> has to go through what I did. So yeah. Usually what my instructor does is she will give you a difficult patient to challenge you if you are doing well. Thanks, Dr. Hahn. Um and if you did a good job and or had a difficult patient the week before, you tend to get an easier patient. I'm really hoping that that's the case. I'm like, Dr. Han, give me a little old lady. That, that would be fantastic by me. Um, so yeah, it would be a good week. I actually had an exam today in my lab class, which I think went well, uh, they have not posted the results yet. So I'm waiting on that. And then I will have another exam on Monday. And after that, and then the validations, and the simulation, which is also next week. Then I get a week that I think is a break. Um, for whatever reason, on the day of Halloween, I don't have class. And I believe that week is a week where I don't have a test or something due, which is nice. So, until next time, I hope that y'all are having a good week and that your weather is starting to turn cooler, if it hasn't already and that your leaves look as fantastic as ours do around here. Um, the trees right by the apartment have not started turning yet, but I know they will soon. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to that because it means that it'll start getting cooler and not be a high of 87 again. So until next time, see ya.